How does it feel to be on stage again with Pill after kind of a hiatus? Well, it, the thing is um, that I've got over the, the, um, the shock, horror and awe of it and we've toured now for almost uh, three years solid. And it's, it's taken nearly 30 years to get into this condition because I used to have stage fright, something wicked. It, it, it's, uh, it's that fear of letting people down. It's almost impossible for me to bear. I, I would be physically sick. But now I look forward to being on stage. And uh, I feel quite nauseous and sick about the moments I'm not. So it's kind of a role reversal. It's, uh, and I've read many books on this from, from actors in particular. People like Alec Guinness and, uh, and whatever, Laurence Olivier, talked about stage fright and, and how you overcome it. To learn to love the fear um, and to see that as a, a, that adrenaline, that, that pre-adrenaline thing, as to be a tool. Because what you're doing by being so down is you're preparing yourself to be so up. So intense stress leads to something really, really exhilarating. But you wouldn't enjoy that exhilaration without a fear before. How do you, how do you maintain that? Or where does that come from? Uh, I think it comes from everything I've just been explaining in a roundabout kind of way. I mean, I almost lost my life when I was young. You know, that was a serious illness I was in. So for me, I fill every second of the day with anything at all that can just be wonderful. Just staring at, the, at a colour. Look, I've got red on. I can stare at that colour for hours and find it enormous entertainment in it. All of it is an experience, and I suppose to stay in that frame of mind is the difficulty. It's a, it's a natural high. Um, and I've done many drugs in my life. <laughs> I am not the same. But there's another condition that you can get into. It's, 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 a, it's a natural exaltation of life, I suppose. Be a better person. Tell some truth. It won't hurt, honest. It will at first. <laughs> what inspires you the most these days? The same things that always have is that, is that search for the proper answer to things. How does that work? Why is that working? I don't know if that's very spiritual either. I don't think it's religious. I think it's just a, a sense of harmony with my surroundings. And then there's my influences. The more I see, the more I learn. The more I like the human race. <laughs> I really do. I think we're a fabulous creation. Uh, some fans of yours in China want to know if you're going to write a song about China someday. Well, China, if you let me down, I'll write it immediately. <laughs> I'm not there long enough, really, to be... Um, lecturing on, on the Chinese experience, but uh, I mean the sheer thrill of seeing Beijing and Shanghai and uh, I don't know if people in China realise how much Chinese culture has influenced the world and, and we're not just talking at the last uh, 70 years of politics, we're talking centuries. Some of the greatest things have come out of China, some of the greatest philosophy some of the greatest inventions, some of the greatest minds, and, and see, that's always going to be there. And all these diversities are, are creating these ingenious ways of looking at things. Uh, in Beijing, I mean, uh, I know you're smog-bound, but I come from Los Angeles. I'm kind of used to it. Um, Shanghai, I mean, there's a romanticism about that place. There's, there's, a, there's a piratey vibe, you know? <laughs> I'm going to China not as a tourist, but as an explorer. And uh, I'm also offering the opportunity to China to explore what it is I'm offering you, music candy. Please come, pay attention, give it a good listen, and by the way, you will be able to dance. <laughs>